Good morning, y'all. So, uh, I didn't do a very good job explaining the math. So I just want to make another one. And, uh, so I'm going to try to slow down a little bit. I get kind of excited. What I was trying to explain yesterday was the difference between strip intercropping, the idea of corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans, catching more light and doing it all together. So I think the efficiency comes down uh, to the phi curve of elasticity, but matchups, okay? So you've seen me draw this a million times, uh, but that's basically what we, where we're at with monocropping is out, out here. We're trying to gain a few bushels for inputs. How can we come back on the curve here and be somewhere we're here? So right here, you might be at say 50 to 60% of the production on 10 to 20% of the inputs. And it's all about matchups, and that's the point of both the relay cropping and pollo cropping here, is putting corn in the position, like this old dead corn plant had 31 ears. How can we empower every entity? Inputs are sold by units. How can we empower every entity? So we do it partially with strip intercropping, and there's a lot of good ideas on my feed. Um, let's say you're six or eight rows, or whatever, with the corn, making a little bell curve there with your corn. You might put a taller corn in the center, shorter on the outside, a flexier one with big ears, increase the population. You know, I don't know what that number is, but I said 20. They said 20 wasn't enough. Maybe you gain 30 or 40, but you are going to lose some uh, with these soybeans in between. So there are definitely efficiencies with that. So I think we can increase exponentially efficiently efficiencies by layering time and space and empowering every plant out there. So you saw with my video I shared yesterday, we triggered five or seven years on these ultra low population corn plants because we gave every plant the opportunity to grab sunlight with each and every leaf. And what I think we can do matchup wise is layer this with a cereal. That's my pink lettering here, maybe a 20 or twin 30 cereal, and then put corn in wide rows with these diamond gaps that allow plenty of ambient radiant light and direct light for the soybeans. But also as the sun changes its position throughout the day, it's gonna give this soybean a little bit of break from direct sunlight, which research has shown might actually increase yield a little bit. So the math comes in of if we're only growing soybeans on 50% of our area to empower the leaves just on the corner of the strip intercropping and we're losing some yield here, we still got to pump this full of nitrogen. There might be a little bit of a efficiency on the corner from the sunlight, but we can exponentially lower our nitrogen needs for corn and I think we can locally place that with technology just around these spots. So if you just have four here and four here, you can get this surface area to where you're banding your nitrogen or encapsulating manure biochar like you're seeing here and, and locally placing that just to get it a, a competitive advantage enough to raise up and now get powered by sunlight and now trigger this. So this is all about micromanaging the macros, a lot of stuff in ag is micromanaging micros. We need to start talking about matchups and empowering sunlight. How do we manage water? How do we manage weeds with biology in the system? So the math, I still haven't got to that, is let's say we gain in 30 bushel here. We're losing six or seven here. There's going to be some advantage there, but you have to take that bean yield and divide it by two. So the, as far as the contribution on the revenue side on this, you're at $275, $300. If we can figure out a way to get 90 to 110% of the bean yields in here and really milk the curve, milk the curve on the corn, then that's going to put you somewhere in this ballpark. So there's about a two or $300 advantage just on the revenue side, but then you start really uh, criticizing the cost if we can lower our seeding costs, our nitrogen, uh, maybe our, our weed control and just efficiency, 
I think you could take this in. So think about that with that 31 ear corn plant, or if you got this guy out here with four big ears, you got 5,000 plants producing, let's say 100 bushel, 110 bushel corn. You can bring your 45 foot draper head in there, take the whole damn thing in. And yeah, I know it's another step separating the seed, but you know, people are spending tons of money on equipment and seat warmers and all this shit on your grain setup. I don't think it's one thing to ask if this is a huge competitive advantage of adding something else um, part of your system. And I know there's rotational issues, but maybe this is uh, part of your, as I said yesterday, maybe you expedite this up and you put a you know 95 or 100 day corn out here and two four beans, get it harvested the 10th of September and get a uh, cover crop out there, exploiting the fact that it's more profitable and just expediting time a little bit. So hopefully that explained what I thought I didn't explain. I think it's uh, will be really interesting layering these cereals out ahead of time. So again, in everything I do, you got to think about what position each plant is going to be every day. Uh, so so a lot of these systems take some forethought planning for the dominoes to be set up in place for them to kind of play out and go. So, all right, back to uh, the fan. Thanks for watching.